said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says all things are possible. All things are possible to him that believe it. Amen. All things. You know, we need to meditate on that verse. I don't think we really believe it. Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believe it. Amen. Nothing shall be impossible with God. Just meditate on that verse and meditate on it and say it over and over until it gets in your spirit before you believe. And your faith will rise to a new level. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember Clint, uh, Pastor Clint Utterbach used to sing that song, and it was always a blessing. Say to the mountain, move. I believe that music is supposed to be as scriptural as preaching. I don't want to hear any music that's not scriptural. I don't want to hear any music that doesn't stimulate faith. Amen. You wouldn't want to hear any preaching that doesn't stimulate faith. You wouldn't want to hear any preaching that's not the word of God. But yet we was reared on music. Much of it was as unscriptural wasn't the word of God. Well, if I'm going to preach right, then we need to sing right. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melodies in your heart to the Lord. Colossians chapter 3 says, teaching and admonishing one another through music. And so music is not just something that entertains our ears. It's faith. It's something going in our spirit. Amen. And building up our spirit on the word of God. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. We want to, are we live? Praise God. We want to welcome everybody that's tuning in to our YouTube channel, Facebook Live. We want to encourage you to go ahead and share this on your Facebook page. Call a friend and tell them that the word of God is being preached tonight. If you know anybody that needs to hear the word of God, which we all need to hear the word of God, Call them and tell them to tune in to Anthony Strauder Facebook page or Anthony Strauder's YouTube channel. Amen. Praise God. We uh, have guests tonight in the house, um, Brother uh, Marcel and Sister Evelyn. And uh, my goodness, I've been knowing them almost 30 years uh, since the early 90s. I first heard you at Pastor Jared Dobbins Church in 1991, I believe. And uh, I've been knowing them ever since. We've had dinner together in Tulsa, 1997. Praise God. <laughs> I know you might not remember that. But uh, been knowing this couple for 30, 30 years. And uh, he married way above his abilities. Listen, <laughs> when you're a guy that looks like Brother, Brother Marcel and you got a wife as pretty as he had, this guy has to know something. Amen. <laughs> he has to know something, too. To win a pretty lady over like that, and, and, and when you look like Marcel, and you can, he knows something. <laughs> Amen. And the same thing goes for me. Amen. Same thing goes for me. When you marry that pretty, you, you know something. And we're not the sharpest knives in the drawer. Amen. Praise God. So they're going to minister uh, the word of God tonight. And we enjoyed the word this morning over in Daphne at Pastor Greg and Sister Ramona's church, Abiding Love, and uh, that was really good. Praise God. It was on uh, fears and anxieties. And I tell you, we need a message like that today because if you give ear to the media and news, you will be full of fear and anxiety. And so we need to press in now more than ever to hear the word of God. And I know, I know about the pandemic and everything that's going on out there, but the pandemic didn't take Jesus by surprise. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 25, forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together as some have. Amen. And the Bible says even so the more as we see the day approaching. And so Jesus knew that there would be pestilence and famines, but the word of God still admonishes us to come together yet the more. That's going to be a glorious meeting in the gathering. Amen. Jesus is in the gathering. He's in the middle of the gathering. And he's going to be the chief shepherd once again. And we will know his voice and hear his voice. And a stranger's voice will not follow. 
Amen. Thank God for uh, <coughs> live stream, social media, and what, what God is doing through that. But there's still power in the gathering. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to go ahead and receive um, our Sunday night offering here. We, we meet once a week on Sunday nights, and we receive our uh, tithes and offerings from our congregation here on Sunday nights, and that goes here to uh, keep the ministry moving forward. Amen. And after Brother Marcel and Sister Evelyn ministers the word, then we're going to receive them a love offering for them. Amen. And I already have a certain amount that I want them to get. Amen. So if it doesn't come in, I'm, I got reserved. Say amen. amen. Do your best. Amen. I think after you hear this word, amen, you, you will uh, be more than willing to contribute or distribute. Amen. The Bible says, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto them that teach it in all good things. Amen. Praise God. So if you need a check, if you need a, excuse me, an envelope, it's one on the um, uh, in the chair in front of you, if you're on the front row, someone would give you one. If you're making out checks for uh, uh, for this ministry, it would be ASM, Anthony Strauder Ministries, ASM will do, or Living Faith Bible Church. Hallelujah. So we want to get that offering in and get that received. And I want to give, uh, I want to give my guests time to minister the Word of God. Amen. Now, they sing. The first time I heard them, 30 years ago, they were singing together the psalm, the sword, and the psalm. Is that right? The word, the psalm, and the sword. Sword and psalm. Amen. And uh, they, they both sing. And, uh, but tonight, we're not set up for the singing. If they sung, it, we couldn't sing and broadcast at the same time. So you won't get to benefit with that part of the ministry to pr perhaps after uh, we're off live. Amen. Praise God. Everyone have the envelopes made out. Hold your offerings up, and um, we want to pray over them. Father, we thank you tonight. Just hold on one minute. I want to thank all of our partners. I don't ever want to get before a camera and not thank our partners. You make it happen. We have some of the best partners in the world. You're a part of everything that we do. Gwen and I really love you. I mean, she loves you all so much. She talks about our partners in the bed at night. And uh, I love our partners, but I don't want to talk about them in the bed at night. <laughs> Amen. But she's so concerned about the partners. Did, have you talked to this person? Have you heard from this person? Have you prayed for this person? Well, I pray personally uh, for every partner. I know their names. I know them on a first name basis. I pray personally for every partner that we have. And God lets me feel the need. He lets me feel the need of that partner. And we can supplicate and pray for the partners because you make it happen. We could not do what we do unless people like you hear from God and obey God. Sure, it's God that's doing it, but he does it through people. Amen? We have to obey him to get it to work. So let's pray tonight. And you, all, if you're watching online, you know what to do. You can uh, text to give. Uh, go to our webpage and uh, give on donate or click on donate and uh, just follow the instructions. And I'm going to pray for the people here and I'm going to pray for you that are watching. Amen. Hold up your offering. Father, tonight we thank you for every seed sown into the work of God. And Lord, you're the Lord of the harvest. You always do right. You always minister to the sower. You always minister grace back to the sore. And we thank you, Father, for watching over your word, watching over our seed. And, Father, there shall be no lack. In Jesus' name, we are claiming free-flowing finances. We thank you for a miraculous year that the best is still out in front of us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Go ahead and receive that offering. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise God. While, while uh, they're receiving the offering, I want to say something about the products on the table. Brother Marcel has been uh, preaching for 38 years, 37 years. I got, I'm in front of him two years. Praise God. I, I'm on my 39th one. And uh, we, we're just moving on with God. But they're, they're Rhema grads. They graduated from Rhema. 
and uh, he's been traveling um, how many road miles? Two million road miles. When I think about that, I get tired. I mean, really, I really get tired when I think about uh, the time that they put on the road. And I want to say this, that uh, we've been praying for you two prior to you two coming here tonight. And I really feel the grace of God that's on your life as itinerant ministers. You know how to do it. You do it with skill. Uh, you've been doing Listen, you couldn't do what they do and not know how to do it to be on the road as long as they've been on the road. And they got a certain system. They, they've, they've, it hasn't all been easy. When you're traveling over 2 million road miles for 37 years, amen, and to uh, nearly all of the states, uh, with the exception of Alaska and Hawaii, you have to have grace to do that. You have to have grace to do that, amen. And there's a lot of people that started out they're not, they're not in the race today. Many of them have gone home to be with the Lord. Some of them have quit and shipwrecked in their faith. But to stay on the road that long, those many miles, and preaching for 37 years and still going strong, that's a grace. They are truly itinerant ministers and teachers of the word of God. They got a lot of products out there on the table. They're all good. Amen. Have you heard them all? No, but I know the man. They're all good. Amen. And I'm just going to mention a few. It's got the power of repentance. Now, this caught my attention because repentance is not negative. It's positive. The Lord spoke to me in October of 2004 and said, faith is weak in the church because there's no repentance. There's no repentance. Jesus began his message by saying, repent and believe. Some people are trying to believe and not doing the repenting. So I'm just sure this is a great series. Amen. The abiding factor. Uh, you know, people visit the presence of God, but we need to learn to abide. We need to learn to stay there, to live in the presence of God. Not visit the throne room on Sundays. Not visit the throne room when it's time to pray. But to abide, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide or live and remain in you, then you shall act what you will and it shall be done. And so uh, this series is on the table. It's really good. And the saving of the soul. Now, he preached some this morning on fear and anxiety. That's a plague in the body of Christ. It's a commandment by Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And so we have to master the soul. We have to learn to serve God in our thinking, in our minds, in our soul realm. The saving of the soul. We've been born again, but our souls hadn't been saved. James told us that. He says, sit back and get rid of all the naughtiness and superfluity and receive the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. And there are multiple singles out on the table. I don't know how much anything costs, but it's affordable. Get something. Take something with you. Amen. Praise God. Uh, you can pay me later, Brother Mike. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to let them come up and um, at this time, uh, your offering. Uh, just give it to Donna. Pass it, pass it down to Donna. Amen. Praise God. Would you all stand, please? And would you give them a warm welcome and a hand clap for them coming? Amen. Praise God. Well, good evening. It's good to be back in this area. It's just a wonderful trek for us when we head this way. I don't care what time it is, what time of year it is. We love coming this direction, seeing familiar faces, meeting new people. It's just an honor to be with you. Uh, I'm Marcel. Obviously, this is the beauty half of the family right here. Amen. My lovely bride of 55 years. Greet the paper. Amen. Praise God. You all go on and have your seats. Ah, praise God. Well, Pastor, you mentioned the message this morning, so I'm going to kind of tag along with you with that, okay? As Pastor said, he taught on fear. 
And I've been sharing something right at about a year now that God helped me with. And a very few churches we've gone to and I have not mentioned this. You know, there are messages that are geared for a certain local church. We have, can't even count the number of them that we have that they, it never hits the table because it was for one particular church. But for the most part, most of what God gives us, we know it's for the entire body of Christ that he allows us to come in contact with. So it is with what God spoke to my heart. So I try to, try to inform as many people as I can as we go. And we are going right now with you, right? <laughs> so speaking of fear, I was not in fear but I had a deep concern in an area. Consider where we are in our country, in the world. Consider where we are in the world. And even though my concern was m more outside of me than with myself, what God gave me, I believe, will be a blessing to you because I really believe if anyone loves another person that you must have that same concern for them so you know just about every household and, and I'm sad to be to even say this but just about every household Christian and non-Christian is split on so many issues in our country today and those of us who believe one way would want for our loved ones to believe the way that we do. But we can't force things on anyone. So I went to God. I said, Lord, what are you going to do? Because we have people in our family, the things that we have proclaimed that we will not do, some of them have already committed to. We have people in our household that when we go to them to share with them certain areas that we know would be right for them to partake of, we find out that that's an X in their heart. So I said, Lord, what, if, what are you going to do? Because some of our family members have already committed to some things that we know are not right. And the Spirit of God, just like you are hearing me, I heard him. And he said, I have placed the blood on the doorpost and on above the lintel for your entire bloodline. Now, I went about sharing this for several months before I even truly understood the impact of what God was saying. Because the thoughts started coming to me, well, wait a minute, that was God. I knew that was God. I said, but why would God need to tell me about the blood when he knows we are covered with the blood? The blood is there. We don't even have to ask him for that. We have that covering. But then I got the insight. Remember what God said? He said, I've placed it there for your entire say entire, entire for your entire bloodline you don't even know who's in your bloodline there are people in our bloodline that we've never even met we've never heard their names we don't know if they're saved or not but God does God does and the comfort God was giving me, I didn't receive that comfort until a couple of months later when I realized that he says, your entire bloodline. So he was telling me that even those who have not, who have not entered into the covenant that we are enjoying today, that he has placed that blood there for them, for their protection as we go through this calamity that we're going through. It doesn't matter what, what it is that they go, it doesn't matter what it is they've already done. 
He said, don't you be concerned about their bodies. He says, I have their bodies covered because I've placed the blood there for your entire bloodline. So I said, Lord, you are not just giving that, that to me for our family. You're giving it to me for everyone that we can speak this word to. And I'm going to invite you to partake of what God has done. He is no respecter of persons, no respecter of families, no respecter of bloodlines. What he said to me, he means it for each every, every ear that will hear it, adhere to it, and receive it in Jesus' name. So say this with me. Say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You, know you know who is in my bloodline. In my bloodline. Even those that I've never met, I've never heard about. You know the ones who are born again. You know the ones who are not born again. But they're all covered by the blood that you have placed, have placed on the door seal and above the lintel. I give you glory. I give you honor for that encouraging word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. That's a good encouraging word. What exhortation that is. Amen. Amen. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Father, again, we thank you for the honor and the privilege of being with our family here in Daphne, Alabama. I thank you, Father, in Mobile, Alabama now. This is the evening service. I thank you, Father, that the goodness of God has prevailed. The hours we've been here, our hearts have fluttered for these reconnections, as it were. And I thank you, Lord, we've connected with people even today that we've not yet met before, hadn't met before. Now for the purpose of fusion, as it were, of the good things of God, we now stand before that holy tabernacle not made with hands, the habitation of the Spirit itself, the body of Christ, in particular these members, Lord, who've gathered themselves to hear what thus saith the Lord, not a man or a woman, but what the Spirit of God has to say. So we lend ourselves to the task at hand, Lord, that you and you alone would imbue the hearts with these, of these people with your word. Leave a stain, a holy stain in their minds concerning these things tonight. In the mach skele resh commanda la sumpa kala neskadea. In that one <laughs> glorious name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. Whew. Glory to God. Glory. I said glory to God. Man. <laughs> now. I've witnessed for many, many years as I'm matured in the things of God, particularly in, in ministry, not just my personal life, but in ministry, uh, my knees were knocked when I got up to preach. I mean, I was just like, you know, man, you know, because you carry in the, the vessel, you're the vessel that's carrying the Holy Word of God. I don't want to miss one thing. I don't want to misstep. I don't want to misspeak or nothing, right? And so the Lord kind of took that away from me, you know, many, many years ago. And, and so I prepare as best I can. And um, the Lord told my wife many years ago when we left Bible school, he said, you prepare or you stockpile. And that's just keep on reading, keep on understanding, keep on absorbing. And when the time comes, I'll take out of that stockpile what I want to give to the people. Amen? That's kind of what we've been operating in for these last 37 years. But, uh, <clears throat> and so it's not uncommon that the Lord would change things I mean, I, I, I had a, a humdinger for you tonight, brother. <laughs> I had it nailed, brother. We go in this direction, ain't we, Lord? And we stopped at Walmart. Of all the spiritual places, Walmart. On the way here, stopped at Walmart. And then I'm sitting there, and I mean, I reached for my bag. My Bible said, let's go, go over the stuff that humdinger I got. I got it. I got to go over it, you see. I mean, the minute I grabbed that bag, it just changed. I mean, the minute I grabbed it, I said, no, no, that ain't fair. But when I knew it was him, I wasn't struggling with the message. I knew, I know the message. That wasn't it. But was that the message for this church tonight? And I always want to be on point. Can you say amen? 
And so we, you know, he just changed it, so I just kind of went with the flow. So go in your Bibles to the fifth chapter of Galatians, and uh, not Romans 10, 17, where we would have started. Amen? <laughs> okay, 5 and 16. Now, some years ago, <clears throat> uh, the Lord dealt with me uh, rather heavily in this area. And I said it this morning in part, but I'll say it uh, completely tonight. Uh, of all the subjects on that table, uh, it's not something, you know, that, that the Lord gave me to give to you. Teach my people this. To you. He does that with people. Didn't do that with me. There were so many deficits in my life, not as a believer, just as a person, right? And uh, when I got into the Word of God, all that began to change, obviously. But when I got messages from God, and it wasn't, you know, for the body of Christ at large, it was a deficit in my own life when I received it. Meaning, I have to implement that in my life. And it helped me. If, I, if it helped me, it ought to help the body of Christ. And so most of the things that I get from the Lord are not for you initially. They're for me initially. Amen? So I get blessed before you even hear it. And such as it was this. This took me two and a half years to get it out of my spirit. I mean, just get into the Word of God because I was loving it, just leaning it, feeding on it every day. And finally, it became a sermon of, of, of sorts. You know, I mean that I, it's, it's kind of a uh, five or six, seven hour, maybe eight, nine hour message. And so I don't know, I'm not a quantifier, so I don't know how many parts there is to it, but I know I have to kind of just break it up, just like I did one of my other subjects, like the saving of the soul. That's four parts there, right? And that, but that's about 12 hours worth of teaching. You try to condense it and get it in, in place so people can have it palatable, you see, such as it tonight. So Galatians chapter 5. And verse number 16, walk in the Spirit, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh. These, flesh and Spirit, are contrary the one to the other, so that you, I, cannot do the things that we would, should, could. But the word would is an, uh, an antique word of the Elizabethan uh, era that means want. You won't do, won't, W N T, do what you want, W A N T, to do. It'll preclude you. What will preclude you? Walking in, the, walking in the flesh. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, he said, walk in the spirit uh, and you shall not uh, fulfill the lust of the flesh. For or because the flesh lusted against the spirit, spirit lusted against the flesh, these are contrary to one to the other. What's that? Flesh and spirit. Now, here's the issue. What we've done, I mean, I, I'm, I, mean, I went to the woodshed on this. I, he took me to the woodshed on this. Amen? What we've done, I'm talking about the body of Christ at large, we've inundated the Scripture with our own viewpoint. And we've had, like we were sharing at lunch today, we've had this plethora of verbiage, proverbial sayings like, Cleanliness is next to godliness. Where'd that come from? It's not a proverb. It's a proverb he was saying, though. People just say that, right? Don't know where it came from. And so, just like we talked about the saving of the soul, we meant in the church that that meant somebody needs to be born again. But the Bible doesn't mean that. I'd rather go with the Bible meaning. Can you say amen? amen. And so, uh, such is it with this particular scripture here. Now, we won't get into all the details, but we want to get the, hit the head spots of the high spots. So he says, walk in the Spirit. Walk, number one, is a one-word command, like stop, go, come. That's called an imperative. It's not like you, you're requesting that maybe you should take a stride now. Amen? It's coming from the Word of God. Walk in the Spirit, and it precludes, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, then, so here's our big nomer, big misnomer, We've attributed things to the Holy Spirit that are responsible that we're responsible for. We have put it over on Him to do that when the Bible's telling us to do that. And so is it this particular scripture. Now, how do you know that? Well, we're going to find that out in a minute. Because this particular word here, spirit, is high case, is it not? Well, the reason it's high case is because some publisher or some translator decided to high case it. 
I'll give you an example. Go to Matthew chapter 4 for a minute. And verse number 1. Matthew 4, and then Luke chapter 4, verse number 1. Both of those spots. And it talks about, we won't get into this in a greater depth in a little bit here. It talks about Jesus being led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Right? Now, how many of you in Matthew, right now, just raise your hand, you're in Matthew, okay? How many of you in your Bible have a high case S? How many of you have a low case S? I do. Three, four. So which is it? Is it, is it a Nelson publisher thing now? Amen? Who, who decides where that goes? Well, I think, no, walk in the Holy Spirit. Context doesn't say that. I'll say it again. Context doesn't demand that. How do you know that? Well, the definite article, T-H-E, when it's used in front of the word spirit, 90 plus amount of the time, we could say 95 to 97 percent of the time, it's not referencing the Holy Spirit at all. At all. Whenever the definite article is there, unless, like Romans 8, 14, for as many as led by the Spirit of God, context demands He's talking about the Spirit of God. The subject there is the Spirit of God. But here in 5 and 16, there's no demand contextually or hermeneutically that he's referencing the Spirit of God. Think about it. Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusted against the Spirit. There's that definite article again. And the Spirit against the flesh. Well, now, let's just think about it. That means that you... In your carnal awareness or posture, is you are fighting the Holy Spirit. Now here's the here's the, here's the winner every time, him and you lose, amen. If you fight against the, the arm, the power arm of God, who flung things into the universe, just about to let there be, you're going to fight against the Holy Spirit and win. Ain't going to happen. But there is a rumble going on. Can you say amen here? In the jungle of your belly. Amen. In other words, there's an inside battle continually. Your flesh against your spirit. The hierarchical order is this. Spirit, soul, and body. You are supposed to be spirit-led. But we've been environmentally impacted to the point that we are solically led most of the time. We've been trained to have external uh, guidance, as it were. All of a sudden, you get born again, glory to God, and somebody gets to teaching you. It's got to go against the grain. So you got to, how do you say? You got to, how did the farmer say, this is a tough road to hold? Amen. <laughs> you got to go across that, that road to try to get it going on because you've been so impacted by environmental stimuli all of your life. Now you got to go the other direction. And to try to do it in, in yourself, you are woefully uh, defeated. So then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, Matthew, someone said it the other day, they had a Bible, I kind of went along this line. Uh, they had both capitals. One had a capital S in one place, the small s in the other place. So it comes down to a publisher's thing, who decides capital S here and there? Not at all. Somewhere, somewhere in the Bible, there has to be some contextual analysis. Amen. And when the context is analyzed, analyzed, analyzed here, you have no reason to say it's talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, the word walk, peripateo, P-E-R-I-P-E-T-E-O, it means to strut all around, like perimeter, right? Strut all around, periscope around. What's the realm? In the Spirit. To strut all around in the Spirit as proof and demonstration of your ability to do so. <laughs> Glory to God. you got to demonstrate. I'm in control of my body. Show me. Refrain from that which you used to do. Come on, somebody say me in here. Demonstrate that you're free of that thing. Well, you know, brother, I'm only human. Oh, man. When I hear that, I want to think, well, how'd you like to only be an orangutan today? Amen? Or a centipede? or a cockroach, only human, demeaning the greatest thing that God has ever done, replicated himself and called you a walking, talking spirit. Yeah. 
Somebody shout him in here. And so now you're going to demean that because you fell, you faltered. Now you need a pedestal to project your corner living on. So you say, I, I'm only human. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad I'm human. <laughs> Amen. And all that being said, so he says here, you, now let's get to that. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. Shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Everybody said the flesh. Now, Paul, I'm a Paulinist. I, I'm just, I'm flat out just, I mean, just, I'm in love with the Apostle Paul. Amen. I mean, I hang out. The first two years that I literally start studying the Bible, my Bible would already open automatically to the eighth chapter of Romans. Just automatically, every time I open, just flat. And I just start all over again. Romans 8 and 1, and start all over again, right? And, and, and I began to see how, how God impacted him, and he took him from a knowledgeable base to a revelationary base. Paul came behind in no gift. We know that. He was a, a Pharisee of Pharisees. He says, yeah, but I counted it all dung. Hallelujah. I don't care what my degrees are. I don't care how many letters behind my name. T D D E D D A G E. How many D's you got? Amen. It's a matter of this. I found something that I couldn't find in those D's. And when I found it, it gave me life. Hallelujah. I started li living a little bit differently. And when I found that out, I told my wife, you know, two and a half years later, I mean, I'm, I'm just devouring this every day. Every trip I took, every fishing trip I took is in my boat. I'm going hunting. It's in my backpack. I'm sitting in, in, in the bush reading, you know, and missing the game. <laughs> But I'm telling you right now, it was worth it. Amen. I had no idea it would ever be in ministry. I just found all of a sudden, this was modifying my walk, my walk in life. And habitually, the things that had locked itself onto me, I, I didn't struggle with them. I didn't say they were not there any longer. I didn't focus on them. And all of a sudden, I looked up, and those things started falling off. Not because I've got to stop this. I just got to quit that. I, I, didn't, I never said anything like that. I just looked up, realized I ain't doing that no more. <laughs> Whoa, glory. <laughs> That's a high step, but I can leap off of here and have me Pentecostal run right around this building, man. <laughs> I'm talking about the word is the modifier. Changing behavior is not you going to some therapist, reading some book other than this book. This is, this is a life-changing word right here. Can you say amen? amen? All right, then. So, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusts it against the Spirit. Now, talking about Paul, I want to get to that phrase, because we find oftentimes people start talking about, yeah, uh, you know, I just got in the flesh the other day. You ever heard somebody say that? Yeah. Ever heard the person between your ears say that? <laughs> yeah, I have. And, and yet, it's so, it's so unbiblical. I said it's unbiblical. Because what Paul means by that is not what you mean by that. You, you're talking about some behavior you did. When Paul's references in the flesh, that phraseology, go to the 8th chapter of Romans. No, go to the 7th chapter of Romans. Hallelujah. Uh, we, just, we started off uh, thinking we're going to get in one area, we're in another. Okay? Hallelujah. So those people you put me in front of tonight, Lord. All right. Romans chapter 7. We'll look at 8 in a minute here. I want to start with 7, though. Our time is limited. We've got to be up before midnight. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 7, verse number 5. Simple, in your face reality. This is not Bible school stuff. This is just regular reading. For when we were in the flesh, enough said. Wow. <laughs> enough said right there. When we were in the flesh means we're not in the flesh any longer. Can you say amen? amen. So in the flesh is not some behavior that someone observed you doing, or you even observed yourself doing, and now you say, I got in the flesh. You know what? That, that's an alleviating you of the guilt that would associate itself with that behavior you did. I just got in the flesh. Now that absolves you. Who I was in the flesh the other day, but I'm not now. So you mean you go in and out of the flesh? That's what you're saying. Well, go to the eighth chapter now. Let's meddle even more. Amen. Romans chapter 8. Uh, verse number 8, 
So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And so you, right, again, we'll lift that out. You say, I didn't please God because I got it in the flesh. No, that's not what he's saying. The next verse tells you. What does it say? But, counterindication, another direction, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. What's the qualifier? If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. <laughs> I ask you, does he? I said, does he dwell in you? Then you, believer, God dwelling house can never get in the flesh. You can only look like you did when you were in the flesh. I didn't say you couldn't do the behaviors. I'm saying you don't ever fall into that nonsense, I got in the flesh. For those that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, watch this, but in the spirit, if so be. If is a contingent participle in the event that this is the case. What? If what's the case? If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Well, does he? Then that means deductively, no believer could ever get in the flesh. That's not going to absolve you of what you did. That's what repentance is about. And also, it won't keep you coming to the altar bawling and squalling every other week. So, so I, I want to walk in freedom. If I'm going to walk in freedom, then I'm going to have to find a way to self-absorb myself. I already have a formula for that. I confess my sins. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Then I'm, I'm, I'm not self-flagellating, beating myself up all the time now because, because I missed it. Anybody in here never missed it? <laughs> Nobody in here? Yeah. Okay, everybody's, okay. I'm glad I see uh, that hand. The rest of you line up, I'll cast a lying demon out of you. Amen? <laughs> of course we've missed it. But what happens? The believer, I'll, I'll say here, Lord, the believer who's walking with God has an ultra sensitivity to missing the mark. When he misses it or she misses it, she automatically knows it. Yeah. Amen? And what happens then? Oh, I mean, repentance is not verbal. I mean, oftentimes, whew, Lord, forgive me. It's, all, it's over, man. I mean, once I'm aware that I just missed it with God, I'm the first to admit it. And the minute I admit it, I want to get absolved of it. What did I do by that? I said, Lord, I confess this. I missed it big. I mean, some things that, are, that you, like, you know, should be like car box letters. You know better. And all of a sudden, you find yourself on the edge of that. Oh, Lord, uh, forgive me. Because whatever reason contributed to it, I'm not going to walk down that again knowingly. Amen? I said knowingly. So, I think we kind of move over in this, this area a little, little bit, looking at what Paul said. He says, in the flesh, which is the Pauline phraseology, you're not going to find it in any other writer. You're not going to find it repetitively in any writer. It'd be indicative in some other places, but not like Paul says. Paul uses in the flesh. And what does he mean by that? When we were in the flesh, Paul always, without exception, refers to the unregenerate man. You're not born again when you're in the flesh. He's talking about other times. When we were in the flesh, the motions of sin did work in our members. You had no control of that because you, you just moved by your appetite. Amen? There was no self-restraint because you had good morals. You might have been raised like a, you know, a real good young person. Young, you had good parents that had good morals. I, I, I was the most moral, uh, aligned person that I knew as, as, as a child my peers. That didn't prevent me when I got on my own, you know, from going completely stupid. <laughs> Amen? I mean, the next thing you know, I mean, you got peer pressure. Uh, you know, I'm in a, an environment of Marines. I'm telling you, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing things I ain't got no business seeing, saying things I got no business saying, doing things I got no business doing. Born again at 12 years old. But I never did one thing that my heart didn't smite me. Not one thing. Why? Because I'm born again, and I should know better. And I do know better. But why am I doing it? Because I got peer pressure. I've leaned into those things. And then, and then there's, there's that putrefying thing after. Participation, right? Wish I hadn't done that a little late for that now. But what happens? Then you, 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 you bawl and squall, and oh Lord, why did I do that? And then you, 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 you repent as best you know how. 
And the next thing you know, it presents itself again, and you end up doing the same thing. Nobody ever been there but me? But one day, I may as well use what Pastor was talking about. One day, I, I, I realized what James 1.21 was saying. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which has dunamai, power, might, ability to sozo your suke, or to save your soul. Got nothing to do with being born again. But my behavior pattern betrayed my true spiritual uh, uh, status. I didn't look like what a believer is supposed to look like. I didn't act that way. Why? I couldn't. Because I had no foundational word. I had religion. Uh, people told me, you know, God doesn't like ugly. You know, be a good boy. And I did that as best I could until all of a sudden, you know, your crazy super new, supernatural appetite, carnal appetite, will bust right through your little moral wall. <laughs> Pow! Just bust right through it. <laughs> there you are. Ow! I'm sorry, Lord. Because, but, but the next thing, it presents itself again, and you find yourself there again. And that's where the cycle starts of bawling and squalling and asking God and this, and that, and the other, until an engrafted word got a hold of me. Man. <laughs> Ooh, oh. I mean, when that happened, I thought, why didn't I know this earlier? Well, they couldn't tell me something they didn't know. They could preach. But they didn't teach me anything about how to live as a Christian. They were so glad that I was basically one of the nice boys in the church. You see, I'm the MYF leader, Methodist Youth Fellowship. That's me. I'm Methodist. Everybody said Methodist. I tried this method and that method and this one and that one, and none of them worked, but this method worked. And the minute I got a hold of this method, amen, the Methodist went out the window. And the next thing you know, I'm feasting on the Word of God. It can't happen without the Word, people. So, go to Romans. We just met, I'm meddling anyway. Go to Romans chapter 12. Hallelujah. When I finish the introduction, I'm going to pull out some notes. Romans chapter 12. Oh, boy. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies... <laughs> your body is a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable or spiritual service. Oh, we love that. Yeah, Romans 12 and 1. Keep reading. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word conform there, I'm just going to tell you this first of all. Ah, oh, may as well. Ooh. The new birth has nothing to do with changing your behavior. Let's put that first. The new birth in and of itself does not change behavior. You found that out, didn't you? Uh, it doesn't change your body physically. It doesn't do anything to interrupt. I mean, you're born again. But the next thing you know, if you don't get into the Word of God and get discipled, you're going to act the same way. Your behavior you won't change, but you just go to church regularly. You might even learn to tithe, do those sort of things, and just kind of blend in with the rest of them. But your behavior pattern hasn't changed, or your appetite hasn't been modified. Amen? And your app, you might put in some restraint, but like I said, your moral wall will cave in or concave to the pressure if, you just, if that's all you're working with. And so... Your behavior, the new birth, doesn't change your behavior. So here he says, and be, and be not conformed to this world. I'm going to take a little run here, Lord, so help me get it over to them. That word there, conform, is suskea matozoa. Thought you'd want to know that. Amen. Suskea matozoa. And that word is P-S-U-C-H-E-M-A-T-I-Z-O. Take the Z-O off and add a C. Drop the fruit of it and put just a P or, or an S there, and you got suketokos, a suke, or suke, or soul. So this is saying the suketokos anthropos, or, or better than that, 
suski amatazo, conform, be not conformed to this world. That means this. Don't become a fleeting, transitory pattern of the cosmos. Fleeting, transitory pattern. Meaning what? Meaning this. Styles come and go. When you hear people say, oh, this is Christian way of Christian style of life. No, you don't want to hear that because styles fluctuate. It's a Christian way of life. All right. So once I came over here and I found the way and I got out of the way, <laughs> got out of my own way and actually got the way, you know, they were called in, in Antioch, those that were in the way first before they were called Christians, they were called the ones that was in the way or that way, way following Christ. So this here, this conformed means I don't walk in the way of the world any longer. I walk in the way of Christ. My behavior is modified by the word of God that I know. It goes unmodified by the word of God that I don't know. So that means then that my behavior is not changed just because I'm born again. It only changes when the word of God now modifies my behavior. It is the only thing that ministers really. The Word of God ministers and changes things. So when he says this, uh, um, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, or metamorphosed. Be you metamorphosed by the, by the renewing of your mind. So metamorphosis is re- rethinking your thought, paradigm shift in your thought life. That's where change comes from. Can you say amen here? Amen. Because if you don't change your thinking, you're going to remain doing the very same thing. But obviously, this is the methodology here that all I've got to do is get transformed, metamorphosed, and let that process not be hurried, as it were. And we, we, we got the analogy of, of that worm crawling around, climbs up the tree, spins that cocoon. Amen? He's still a worm. But he's surrounding himself with a different, different environment feeding on the manna of worms, glory to God, that's going to change his very nature. Can you see this? And the minute he gets in the right time, he comes out of there, glory to God, and he's got a different modality. He crawled in and he flies out. (laughs) There's still worms on the ground that could have the same potential. They can crawl up. But some don't want to work spending that cocoon. That's work. But what he does, he says, well, this, I'm, I'm genetically inclined to this. Every human being was born spiritually genetically to be born again. Hey, are you listening to me today? I want to meet my destiny. I want to walk in the things that God told me to walk in. I can't do that unless I get changed. That metamorph food means this. That worldliness that I lived and walked in before, uh, I, I, I was, I was, that was the crawling then. That was the worm life. Amen. But I'm soaring above the circumstances now. <laughs> Listen to me. This is not complex. Walking in the Spirit is literally being led by the Holy Spirit and the human spirit, by the Word of God, which is Spirit. And when you do that, it's not like all of a sudden you got to look super spiritual. Amen. We quoted that uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 14 this morning. I don't know if we did or not. Seems like we should have, but we didn't. Amen. For the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they, the things of the Spirit of God, are absolute foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned or understood. Meaning this, your mind or your, or your soul was never designed to understand the things of God. You process through the soul everything that's going to become spiritual worth. It goes through the sensory realm. But at that point, it's not, it doesn't stay there and becomes reality to you. It comes right through the soul. It's the channel that literally feeds right into your spirit. And now when it gets there, it has to be interpreted, whatever. What, whatever, the Word of God. Remember John 6, 63? My words, they are spirit and they are life. Well, a natural man cannot understand that. The mind, the soul of man cannot process spiritual matter. If the word is spirit and you can't process that, what's the best thing? Well, just take a seminarian attitude and be a, be a philosopher. 
be an erudite, scholarly person, academician, and sound impressive. Look impressive. Glory to God. Man, he, oh, that guy, he knows all those big words. And, and, and it's crawling as a meatball rolling down the street. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I, I left Louisiana uh, as a child, and I, I was all, all in the Methodist church, I could tell you. I mean, I just had to find me a Methodist church, man. So I found Almanza United Methodist Church in Alhambra, California. And I went into that church, I walked in there, and it was huge, you know. I mean, more than 43 people. I mean, it was huge, right? And, and, uh, and I mean, Dr. So-and-so and so will walk out of there. Man, when he finished, people go, ooh, swelling words. Ooh, oh, he had a handle on the, on the English language, man. He had mannerism that just, oh, ooh. and I fell right into that. Oh, man, I'm, man he's, boy, he was, a, we had a beach trip. I never, my first beach trip with the youth group. We got out there. I looked around, every staff member, women staff members, they had bikinis on that you couldn't even see, they were so small. <laughs> I mean, it's like G-string, you know, to the 10th power, to the negative, amen? I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, what is this? I'm a country boy from Louisiana, I'm going, <laughs> and it's bouncing around, <laughs> I'm thinking, <laughs> i never forget it. And this girl named Suzanne, I'll never forget her name. Suzanne said, yeah, you know how to body surf? I said, no, I'll teach you. So she takes me out to the water. And she just turned around, and, and, and something, a big wave hit her or something, and she fell into me. Boom, I thought, yeah, get out of here. <laughs> this is the church. And I'm thinking, well, what, what, what went wrong here? Nothing went wrong. Holiness was far from them. They knew nothing about sanctification, yeah. taking care of your body. I mean, I thought, let's get this trip over in a heartbeat here. <laughs> I thought, and I went back to church with a different perspective, you see. I'm, I'm expecting a different, I'm diff a different, I can get that in the street. Yeah. Yeah. Behavior is modified by the Word of God. Yeah. And without the Word of God, you don't even sense the need to modify your behavior. Jesus is acceptable even among the saints, so to speak, you see. But that's not what I want to do. I want to glorify God in my body, which is His. Can you say amen here? And if that's the case, then I'm going to find out how to do that. I'm not going to find it out, you know, like playing in the bars. I used to play in at 16 years old. I saw things I shouldn't see, sitting behind a set of drums. I, I did that for, for four, five, six, seven years. Went to Los Angeles, got involved in another band, we started another band out there. You know, you're playing in Hollywood and all these crazy places, and, and you're seeing things. I mean, in how Hollywood is tame now con concerned where it was when I was there. I mean, it was absolutely bonkers, you know. And I thought, okay, well, you know, that's them, not me. But your environmental stimuli, the more you put yourself to that environment, the more it can actually translate to your behavior pattern. The only thing I didn't do was get involved in drugs. I just could never stand drugs. I could never do that to my body. But I wasn't, wasn't much short of that I wasn't involved in. And I realized when I said this morning, I really was trying to get to the things of God all my life, and I thought I had. And then the next thing you know, I didn't have enough word to sustain me. And so I'd, I'd flop back and forth, flop back and forth. And finally, in, in, in 1980, she got born again. Went to a church of God in Christ in Highland, in, uh, in Rialto, California, on Highland Boulevard, and, uh, and uh, invited me. And I said, well, man, she went to church. She said, oh, man, we'd gone to church before. Man. She was excited. I thought, whoa, go with a God. My wife wants to go to church. So I go to church. And little did I know, remember, I'm Methodist. <laughs> We're talking church of God in Christ. My Praise and worship was basically this. Miss Sylvia Watkins, a semi-comatose organ player, amen, <laughs> who just lean on the B flat until it just, just somebody would shake her and she'd wake up. <laughs> and, uh, and that was it. She was it. There was no other piano player. Miss Sylvia Watkins. I'm thinking, oh, man, all right. I go in there. She walks in just as, as if things are normal, right? So I walk in there. 
And folks on the stage, listen to me, got drums. Drums in the church. <laughs> Guitars. In the church. Horns. In the church. I'm thinking, what's the matter with these people? <laughs> and so what I've got, see, environmentally, this is church to me. But now I come in, I don't know about songs and hymns and spiritual songs. I don't know about the high sounding symbol. And I'm a drummer. But never in the church. God forbid. And the next thing I know, I saw a lady, and I'm a drummer. I am a drummer. I saw a lady playing a tambourine with rhythms I never heard of. <laughs> what in the world is this? I said, can we get out of here? I mean, I want to leave in a heartbeat. But I couldn't. Something was drawing on my spirit. And I said, well, we can go next week if you want to. I wanted to. I said, I'm just going to water off the other stuff, you know, as best I can. And uh, to get something. I didn't even know what I was looking for. But man, they were preaching the word of God. And they were preaching holiness, which I'd never heard of. That you can walk before God in holiness. I thought that was reserved for the people that were venerated saints. I didn't know that you could do that. But the body of Christ, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, is holy. And I'm a member in particular. Can you say amen here? So what I did, I said, okay, I relented, as it were, my previous mindsets. You can only do that, you know, if you're ready to learn. But God knew that I would eventually capitulate to him and say yes, not only to him, but to his vineyard. The last thing in my mind would have ever been standing before people preaching the word of God. That would have been the last thing I would have done. I've been for thousands singing in, in nightclubs, but the thought of standing before somebody, I mean, I was nervous. I just couldn't handle it. Uh, you know. and, and next thing you know, uh, God beckoned me and uh, through her because she decided that the, she heard the Lord first. We're going to go into ministry. I said, well, I'll help you. Whatever you want to do. Yes, Glory to God. Bought all the equipment. She got all the equipment she wanted. That, back in that day, you have to have your own sound equipment when you travel. And so I said, whatever you want to do. Now listen, there was no reason for her to go into ministry except God. She had gotten tired of being a bank supervisor. That was just work all the time. She decided she was going to just go and just basically find something to do with her hands. Got wind of uh, General Dynamics, Aero, 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 uh, Dynamics there in, in um, Aerospace in Pomona, California, was hiring solderers. And a friend of ours had a business on the side just soldering, so she'd been doing that for about two or three months. So I can do that. She walks in. She gets the soldering job, and God sets a lady in front of her from the Church of God in Christ, who's all day long saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And she's talking about the, the fun they had on the weekend. Her meaning, man, we had a good time this past weekend. And May's saying, well, bless the Lord. <laughs> and before long, that began to get to her. And the next thing you know, she invites her to church. She goes to church. But God was in it all because he elevated her in that job. Less than five years, she's walked in from soldering, and now she's a salaried level employee. Jettisoned her. That stinger weapon you see that's shooting the aircraft out of the sky, she was the project manager over the stinger development. With no engineering whatsoever, no engineering background, no college background at all. A supernatural favor on the believer's life will accelerate you. Somebody shout amen. 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 And she's walking away, and they offer another position when she says, we're going to leave. And she tells me, well, this coming January will be my last uh, day on the job. I said, are you sure that's the Lord? Because I question that a lot. Well, God said that's going to be your last day. I said, is that right? I said, well, I want to say, tell him to ask me. <laughs> I'm talking about walking in the Spirit, and you can't do it other than being led by the Spirit, by the Word of God, by the Holy Spirit, and by the Word of God, which is Spirit. Amen. You are destined for greatness, every individual. But you have to walk in the Spirit for that to happen. Can you say amen? amen. Now, I'm going to pull out a couple of notes because uh, uh, that was all introduction. 
All right. All right. I want to jettison through this real quick. Don't get nervous in the service. All right. We want, I only have three closings, and I haven't started the first one yet. Now, go to the eighth chapter of Romans again. I'm just going to dance around a little bit because there's no many, so many places I can go. Romans 8 and 26. We understand this particular scripture. Uh, Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also, have I said the Spirit, the Spirit. also helpeth our infirmities. Now, that definite article in the word of Spirit, it doesn't say Spirit of God, but your, your Spirit ain't, her, ain't helping your weaknesses. It's the Holy Spirit. Amen? It's helping your weaknesses, your infirmities. Right? So it says this. For you know not what you ought to pray for as, uh, as you ought, but the Spirit itself should be himself. We know that. Make an intercession for us with the groans which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. There is no way that you as a believer are going to have an effective prayer, prayer life without being filled with the Holy Spirit. It just doesn't happen. Because in the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians 16 and 17 in that area, the Bible says, What well, then I will pray with the Spirit, I will pray with my understanding. Then he says this, When thou bless with the Spirit, for those who say, well, tongues of the devil, that can't be of God, Paul calls it blessing with the Spirit. When thou bless with the Spirit. Then he says, Thou givest thanks well. In one passage, he says, The best way to give thanks is blessing with the Spirit, which is singing in the Spirit or speaking in the Spirit. Meaning what then? There's no higher form of blessing other than or more that exceeds praying in the Spirit or speaking in the Spirit. Yeah. Speaking means praying in the Spirit, yeah. singing in the Spirit. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So that means this. That means if I pray in the Spirit, my spirit prayeth. Yeah. So if I walk in the Spirit, my spirit is walking. Yeah. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's my spirit. Yeah. My spirit is treading, as it were, that peripatio, walking all around as proof and demonstration that I can be above sin. I can demonstrate by the power of God that that has no hold on me. I don't succumb to it. I don't entertain it. Why? Because I'm walking in the Spirit. And I don't look any different because supernatural living doesn't have to be dynamic. Doesn't have to, all of a sudden, you know, you, you got the airs of what's going on and you're looking like a, and you're walking. No, no, man, it, it, it's seamless. <laughs> this life is, this walking in the Spirit is seamless. And it should be seamless. Otherwise, you, you, you're elevated in the eyes of others who think that's unattainable for them. you super saint. And they don't want anything to do with that because they know they can't match up to that. But if just by, by demonstrative walking or posture, you absolve yourself of the things that people participate of, and they inquire as to how you do that, I've got an answer for it. I've got an answer for it. And not just a new birth. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, and I believe what God said I can do, I can do. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I don't battle habits. I don't fight to stay away from temptations. I know my ground, but on, on the other hand, I don't tempt God. The things I've been delivered from, now let me just be honest with you. Walking in the Spirit entails a lot of things that we, can, we can't even scratch the surface. But what happens many times, people get delivered and present themselves to the same area that they were delivered from to try and show their strength. That's a bad mistake, all right? All right? Because an unguarded strength is a double weakness. And unguarded strength is a double weakness. If I'm not on top of it, I don't present myself to forms or dens of sin that I used to participate in. I don't have a bar anointing. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't looking for a bar anointing. Uh, my wife knows this. There's a young man that, that we raised up. We were pastoring, and we raised him up and put him in position on fire for God. I mean on fire for God. At 24 years old, he had about six or seven employees. I mean, businessmen. I mean, just minds sharp on business, right? Doing wonderfully. 
got married, wonderful young lady. And uh, he was, uh, the Lord gave me, uh, 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 how do you call it? What do you call it when you, when you have the words that mean something? Uh, I mean the letters. Acronym. acronym. Gave me an acronym, YAP, Young Adult Perspective. And I said, I want you to be ahead of this. Because he was solid in the Word of God. He says, well, Pastor, I can't. I said, you can do it. All right? And he did. Did an excellent job. Amen. And I'd have him bring their teaching in every time and put the cassette on my table and I'd listen to it. And I'd encourage him where he needed encouragement, you know, and, 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 and he was doing a great job. But he had this, what he thought was an anointing. And uh, since he had been delivered from this area, there was a, on Holt Boulevard, there was a bar called the Eiffel, the Eiffel, E-Y-E-F-U-L-L. And it was basically, that wasn't a topless bar, but it was that side of a bar. A lot of women, you know, scantily dressed, as it were, by design. It was packed all the time. And he'd go there and he'd minister outside. He says, they need the Lord. I said, yeah, they need the Lord. I said, but uh, you might want to be careful. You know, take your wife with you. If you're going to do that, take your wife with you. She can minister to those ladies better than you can. Yeah. Amen. And um, he, just wouldn't, he just wouldn't listen to me. And all of a sudden, he kept getting an eye full. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. What it was, he just couldn't take his eyes off of those women. And he was, watch this, it was a surrogate ministry. When you get a surrogate ministry, you put in something in place of ministry, and you're calling it ministry, and it's not. It's actually ministering to you from a carnal perspective. And now you put a covering on it with spiritual veneer and call it ministry. And the next thing you know, he's divorced. And I says, what? He told me, I'm having trouble. I said, what? His wife said, he can't keep his eyes off of women. He's trained himself to be excited about bustuous women or whatever, scantily clad women. His wife, obviously, sometimes has no clothes <laughs> by design. Isn't that enough for you? But no, you got to go out and you got to look at stuff because now I'm ministering. You're not ministering. You're there lusting. That's what you're doing. You're lusting. So keep away from things that are, are potentially pitfalls from you. If you've ever had any trouble with it, stay away from it. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, I, I do understand that there are like 12 step programs and things like that, but I, I, I have objection to those when somebody says, My name is Joe Blow and I'm an alcoholic and has not drank anything for 20 years. Your mind, you are still an alcoholic in your mind. Your soul's not saved there. Your mind's not renewed there. You can never walk in the Spirit. You can quote scripture all you want to. You will never be free until you say, My name is Joe Blow. I used to be an alcoholic, but I'm not anymore. That when God makes the change, it's changed forever. He changes your want to. <laughs> I, I don't want to no more, Pastor. Somebody shout at me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, glory. I don't want to anymore. So I've come to the conclusion, walking in the Spirit is not some ethereal concept out there somewhere. Go, oh, I'm in the Spirit. No, it's just walking according to the Word of God being led by the Spirit of God, amen, disdaining that which invades holiness, I mean, have a disdain for the unholy, and have a, a desire for the reverence, reverential, because if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves in this modern day era of being flippant with God. Uh, you, uh, you're going to go, I'm going to jump on my daddy's lap, and this is not, this is a holy God Amen. And, and what's that name of that song? I can only imagine. Oh, I love that song. Will I dance before you, Jesus? Will I bow? Will I fall? Will I be able to talk at all? I can only imagine. You're not going to go, oh, I'm going to jump in my daddy's lap. When that holiness hits you, you're going to fall on your face. You're going to glorify the one that saved and redeemed you. Somebody shout amen. How dare you be that flipping with the holy God? No, it's not one of these things all of a sudden we got to get, well, let's, you know, that's modern. Modern? You think they'll modernize hell for you? You think all of a sudden it's got to get more comfortable for you because this is, different, this is a different generation, you know? It's still hot with brimstone and fire. <laughs> 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 
which I'll never see. I'm going to have a reverential awe for my God. Somebody say amen here. Amen. Now, here, here we are. Walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That, that's, that's, that is clear as it's going to be. I can preclude lustful, fleshly living by just being in the spirit. It's a byproduct, as it were, of walking in the spirit. I don't struggle. I don't try to make something happen uh, to make God look good. Amen. The, the life of faith, even as it were, is a seamless life. The supernatural should accompany you every day. I mean every day. And we, we look at some things sometimes and, and I said, do you realize what just happened? I mean, nobody knows it but us. And even if we were to tell it, it wouldn't seem like anything to anybody else. But supernatural just occurred. I was standing in my, my window one day, uh, this big picture window, and I, I was getting ready to release my book. And, and it's been nine years since it had been written. I had the manuscript all that time. And the Lord said, supernatural by a certain person, well, we, want to, we want to write, we want to produce books, books for you. That very day I'd already decided I got to release that book. I read it every day, every day. Well, not every day, very regularly, and I couldn't release it. It was paginated, ready to go to the publisher and everything. I couldn't release it. And then one day the Lord said, take a look at it again, and I did. It was a doctrinal book. Doctrine's got to be tied up, man. You just can't leave anybody hanging, right? And, uh, and he said, add this, and I called it summary. And one and a half pages of summary made the whole book come together. Wow. All those years I couldn't do it. Now, see, I could have forced it out there because it was ready to go. But I, first, I just couldn't release it. For some reason, I just couldn't release it. But now, even before that, uh, I had written it so long ago, I had it on a, on, 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 a, on a disc. And I misplaced that disc in my office for months. It was just gone. I couldn't find it. I'm standing at that window. I'm just standing looking, looking out the window. I heard this. Look down. Look down. And I, just, I didn't just look down. I looked down like this. Look down. And there between my trash can and my desk was that little disc just sitting there. Man, I turned around, picked it up, put it on my desk, and had me a Pentecostal fit. All my Why? Supernatural. Supernatural. I ran and I said, I got it. I got it. What did you give me? The Lord showed it to me. My mind wasn't on it. Look down. Look down. I want to live like that, Sister Becky. I want to walk all of my days sensitive to the Holy Ghost. It might not sound like something to somebody else, but man, that was a monumental day. I said that was a monumental day. That's what the walking in the Spirit is about. It's not about you all of a sudden demonstrating to the world something. It's, man, it's your individual cadence with God. You lockstep. You just lockstep. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust is against the spirit. Spirit against the flesh. These, flesh and spirit, are contrary one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. Or you should. Or you want to. It will be self-impeding, as it were. When you don't walk by the Spirit. You know what? There are things you might not, ever, not even ever miss. I remember when we left to go to Rhema. Uh, she had basically quit her job like she said the Lord told her to. And she obeyed him. Glory to God. So I said, this must be Jesus, right? And so in that following, that was 85. And so that following, we launched the ministry in 85. And then uh, that's another story. But in, in 87, we're going to Rhema. And so now I've got a career I'm walking out on. I heard the Lord. I mean, clearly, it wasn't her, it was him. And uh, I thought, okay, Lord. So I told him I'm leaving. I've got 17 years on that job. I said, well, I'll be leaving. Well, when are you coming? I'm not coming back. What do you mean you're not coming? I'm, I'm going to Bible school. I'm changing careers. Okay, the door's always open if you want to. I said, okay, but I, 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 I refuse promotions. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm out of here. Right. And so we did. So we left. Now, sold our beautiful home. We lived 35 minutes below the San Gabriel Mountains. 
I could look at the snow on the snow-capped mountains and go skiing and come down and be at uh, Redondo Beach in the same day. Get in the ocean one and go back and ski. It was, it was the garden. That's when California was California. Amen. It ain't that now, but it was. All right. And so, so here's the issue. So we, we, we gave our home up. We had rental property. We sold that. And uh, we downsized from Mustangs and Thunderbirds to uh, a, tempo. a tempo. With no air conditioner. No air conditioner. No five on the floor. 16 cc, 1600 cc engine, five by eight trailer with a boy, a dog, and my wife. Everything we owned that we didn't sell within that five by eight trailer hooked up to a tempo. <laughs> and so we left, happy as a lark. We got out of Southern California, well, not Southern California, got out of LA, and uh, Interstate 15 goes to Vegas from San Diego. We get on right there in San Bernardino County. We get on right there. At the top of that hill, it's called the Cajon Pass. It's the last time you can see the L.A. Basin. L.A. is just basically a bowl, the L.A. Basin. So I looked back over it, and I thought, I was shifting going, man, dang. I mean, speaking of which, at some point or another, with that little engine pulling all that stuff, I was double clutching. That thing was going backwards every now and then. You know? <laughs> going up that hill, I'm thinking, business is happy. I'm thinking, you don't know, just one missed clutch, and we've died back to the bottom of the hill. <laughs> and so we're going up that hill, and I finally crushed it, crested it. I got to, oh, man, I shifted on the third, and I looked like this. You can see the L.A. Basin. And the Lord said, never look back again. Oh. Then I heard this. This shouting territory. He says, because there are blessings on the other side of yes. <laughs> there are blessings on the other side of yes. And from that day to this day, it's yes, Lord. I don't ask any questions because the blessings are on the other side of my yes. And my point was, if I didn't say yes, I wouldn't know what I missed because I never would experience it. People have lived their whole lives just that close to a blessing that never manifested because they wouldn't say and capitulate and say, fully say, yes, sir. I don't care what he requires of me or when he requires it, it's going to be done. Yes. We were leaving Des Moines, Iowa, for example. Des Moines, Iowa, we'd been in a camp meeting all week. And we're en route to, to uh, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Pretty good drive. Had to start a meeting that night. On the way there, the Lord said, I want you to go and talk to so-and-so, another minister. I want you to minister to him. I said, yes, well, I'll do that. And he says, now. I'm thinking, no, you don't understand. <laughs> I've got a meeting tonight. <laughs> That's five hours on the other side of where we have this meeting. And uh, I just kept driving. And I knew what I'd heard. I thought, oh, no. I told him, I said, listen, I said, I'm going to drop you off at the Holiday Inn where our reservation is. I've got to keep going. Why? The Lord told me to go to see so-and-so and so. When? Now. So I just kept driving, dropped her off, kept driving. I mean, I mean, you can only go 65, you know, in that area. There wasn't any 70 back then. 65, I'm driving 65, 65, I'm pushing the block. I called him, I said, listen, I'll be there in a couple of hours. I've got to talk to you. He said, well, I'm in the office. I'll still be here. And so I got to the office, walked upstairs, sat down. How are you doing, man? You know, I said, well, we got a meeting, and so on and so on. What are you doing here? The Lord told me to come and talk to you. And I sat down and delivered what God said to him, which wasn't just a wonderful little, wonderful little meeting. It was a word of correction. I had to deliver because it was critical timing. And I said what the Lord said, got up, walked around, turned around. He didn't say a word. Got in the car and headed back. Another three hours. Three and a half, four hours. I got there 10 minutes before the meeting started. And a year later, he calls me and says, you know, I, I wasn't willing to accept that. But, you know, exactly what you said transpired. Because it was critical that I obey him 
It had nothing to do with, ministry has nothing to do with convenience. Nothing to do with convenience. It's acquiescence, yes, Lord. Because the benefits of yes, Lord can only be activated by that yes, Lord. Because there are blessings on the other side of your yes. Can you say amen? All that being said, uh, I, I, I knew uh, at Walmart that we have to go down this road. But the Lord just released me to at least touch bases on what we would have done. Amen? That's His grace. So go to Romans 10 and 17. Whew, thank you, Father. Oh, Lord. Thank you. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And something Sister Gwen said before service activated this. I mean, I'll tell her later. But it activated this. And I thought right then, did I miss you, Lord? And I knew I hadn't heard. I hadn't missed him. Okay? Everybody say, faith cometh. Faith cometh. Elizabethan participle means ongoing contemporaneous action. Faith is continually coming. Yes. And it's coming by hearing. Everybody say hearing. hearing. Now go to Isaiah chapter 64. Isaiah 64. Hallelujah. A couple other places we're going to go real quickly. Amen. Isaiah 64. Now, we're going to see something here that will help us. Uh, uh, I think we were talking at lunch today about the teacher's office. Uh, the minute that you, should, you gave me that, that's what we were talking about today at lunch. And uh, you don't see, we were, taught, we, were, we were asked to teach on the fivefold ministry in India. Uh, a few years ago, and being an, a, ten, a teacher, an itinerant teacher, not a resident teacher, we, we travel all over the world teaching. Uh, being in that office, I figured, well, if I'm going to teach on it, which we, it's not a subject for church, you know, such fivefold ministry, it's just not really a church subject as such. We can read and understand it, but as far as a, a church subject, it wasn't that, so I never got to teach on it. I thought that someday I would, and that's when they asked me to do it. And so when we did this, you got, that's the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, all of it for two weeks. I thought, man, what a forum this is. And we got going. And I figured I'd buzz through teaching because I am a teacher. I'll just buzz through that and get to the other ones. Spent most of the time on that office teaching, teaching on the teacher's office. Why? Because there's not a plethora of writing material out there in the first place. You hear very few people talk about it and teach on the teacher's office. Matter of fact, you don't even hear the title teacher. It's, you know, prophet so-and-so, apostle so-and-so, pastor so-and-so, evangelist. But you never hear teacher Marcel or teacher Elvin or teacher whomever. It's just not a handle. And it's reflected by a lack of print on the office. And so I realized when I got there, I said, well, okay, Lord, well, I'll just spend some time here because I know the in and outs of it, but I ended up spending most of the time on that teacher's office. And that showed me something. There's not enough knowledge out there about that particular office. And I realized right then that God had uniquely placed us in this office. And I thank Him for it every day. Amen. Amen? And so here in Isaiah 64, I even got there, I told you to go there. Here's a manifestation of, of that office, not of Marcel, but that office. And I, I, I've been looking at this one dealing with this for probably 30 years. Verse number 4, Isaiah 64 and 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen no God beside thee, uh, what he hath prepared for them that waited for him. Paul picks up on that, obviously saying the same thing, for them that love him. Amen? That's where he got it from. Well, now he says, I have not seen nor ear heard now, since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear. Now, let's stop there in the middle. Sounds like duplicity. Men have not heard nor perceived by the ear. That's superfluous. If heard means hearing, then why would you say heard by the ear or by the ear? Unless heard does not mean hearing primarily. So then, that caught my attention. 30 years ago. And so when I saw that, I went over to the New Testament. And I said, now, Lord, now I'm going to trace this word 
and every application that you put it in the Bible. So I did. I got over it in Romans 10, 17, and Galatians 5, uh, Galatians 3 and 5, and, and, and following, I kept hearing, and there's a this unique phraseology that Paul uses, the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. Nobody uses that but Paul. And nobody says faith coming by hearing but Paul. But James uses the word heard. Peter uses the word heard. And what does it mean then if it doesn't mean hear? Well, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now here, here's where we meddle. We have all succumbed, I think, to just again proverbial sayings and picking things up like lost souls, meaning the people not, not saved yet. And now we know that's not the Bible. The saving of the soul is independent of and subsequent to the new birth. We know that. However, we've stumbled here as well. Because what we say, faith coming by hearing, listen to me, and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing, stress and rapidity. And really, it's saying, if you hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it, and hear it even some of our wonderful brothers I've, I've, I've talked with before, I'm talking about some national people, have made things like, you know, you got to hear it and hear it and hear it, and it drops from your head into your heart. Now, 18 inches, it drops from your head to your heart. Now, you say it. But the Bible, the Bible doesn't stress that whatsoever. As a matter of fact, go to Matthew chapter 13. Go to God. You got the keys? I've got the keys. They're looking at me real strange right now. Amen? I'll break for it. We'll send for our book material later on. Amen? <laughs> Matthew 13. Repetition is not what's being stressed there. I said repetition is not stressed. If it were the case, there are things that will be called implicit and things that are explicit. Mm -hmm. Things that are implied one way and it's explained greater in depth at another area of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Here's one of those things that we just talked about, hearing and heard. Yes. Chapter 13, he's talking about the parable of the sower. Mm -hmm. Verse number 19, when anyone heareth, again, Elizabethan participle, continuing to hear. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then come the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. So you can hear it and hear it and hear it over and over and over until the understanding comes. Faith won't come. So it means this. It's the Greek word that's translated in English, A-K-O-E, and it's deritus, a koi. It means this. Faith comes by understanding and comprehending and comprehending and understanding by the word of God. Not repetition. You can hear, you can hear, and back in the day, in the 70s, we got a hold of this, I wasn't in it, but in the 70s, because of the faith confession, thank God, we got to confess. But confessing and confessing, confessing and confessing won't make faith come. You say it over and over and over again, that doesn't mean it's going to matter. Until you understand it and get revelation on it, faith will never come. No matter how many times you say it. Faith comes by understanding and understanding by the word of God. God, Lord. Go to Galatians chapter 5. Uh, was it 5? Or was it, was it uh, I think it's 5. Yeah. Uh, it might be 3. Let me just see once I get there. You know, it wasn't Galatians 30. I know that. 3 and 5. I said 5. Huh? It's 3 and 5. Now look at what, this, what he says here. Man, why am I taking so much time to get to Galatians? It's not like I just left it just 20 minutes ago. Amen? All right. Chapter 3, verse number 5. Look at what he says here. Ye therefore that minister to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth ye it. Does he do it? By the hearing of of what the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Amen. Now listen to me. He doesn't mean he's, you heard teachings on faith. The hearing of faith here is the understanding of faith. Yes. Does he do it by the understanding of faith? 1 Corinthians 14, 2. He that speaketh not in unknown tongues, speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man heareth him, understands him. It's understanding. In the same chapter, go to verse number, uh, uh, 
Where was it? Yeah, verse number two. This only what I have, what I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Not because you heard a teaching on faith, but the understanding of faith. Faith comes by understanding and understanding by the Word of God. That means this. If I don't understand it, no matter how many times I heard it, faith ain't coming. And if faith ain't coming, I'm just going to blow it off like I got faith. Because I heard it. I heard it and I spoke it over and over and over again. Did you understand what you heard? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Understanding and understanding by the Word of God. So that means this to me. I can hear something and I don't understand it and I can't get the benefits of it. And if I don't get the benefit of it, I'm going to stay until I can understand it. And then draw from those benefits, you see. Uh, Go to Hebrews. Well, let's not leave here. Oh, go to chapter 4. Yeah, we're here. Go to chapter 4. Oh, man. Oh, glory. Verse number 21. 421 of Galatians. Tell me ye that desire to be under the law. Do you not hear the law? <laughs> that makes no sense. Well, do you mean hear the I'm, I'm not, I hear the, that's not hearing. Do you not understand the law? Because if you understood the law, you wouldn't want to be under the law. Amen. Anybody get any help other than me here tonight? Because I'm telling you, this is where the rubber meets the road. We have to understand the Word of God to implement it correctly. Yes. Hebrews, uh, it might be 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Pretty sure it is. Let's take a look at this. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2. That's another teaching altogether. Hebrews chapter 2. Yeah. Yeah. Verse number 2. Hebrews 2, verse number 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them slip. What do you mean by that? The things you understood should always be on display in your life as a believer. Because if you don't use it, you do what? You lose it. You implement what you understand. And when you do that continually, your life is always on the increase. Continually ascending, not descending. You're not stalemated. You're growing exponentially all the time. Incrementally, but yet exponentially all the time. Because understanding now, you can put it in your back pocket. That goes to the bank. Got that one. Amen. Amen. And so in faith, when he goes back, men have not seen nor perceived by the ear. No, have not heard nor perceived by the ear. You know what that means? Heard does not mean uh, per- perceived by the ear. means just that. Contextually, perceived by the ear. But heard does not lend itself contextually to perceiving by the ear. That's why he used it. Men have not understood nor perceived by the ear the things which God hath prepared for them who waiteth on him. I have not seen Paul says, ear have not heard, nor been to the heart of man. That word heart is not spirit. It's the mind of man. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. So when the word of God presents itself to you, understanding has to be the outcome. And until you get that understanding, don't prematurely leap off into something because the Bible said it. The Bible said it, but can you apprehend it and then uh, comprehend it and then put it into, in, into play. You can't do that with confidence. Even if you do it, we have a lifetime. Do you understand that God, in his infinite wisdom, took a man out of a shoebox and breathed life back into him so he can put a word in the earth for all who believe to act on? And I thank God for him every day. I said, Lord, that was my spiritual father. It was the vacuum left out of my life when that man left the earth. Vacuum, just shoot. But then I realized. Now, you, 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 I know, I know uh, Pastor Anthony understands this. Many times, that, that, was, a, that was a coy spirit about Kennedy Hagan. That was a, that was a, 
a wisdom that he walked in that was just, it was detectable, but it was not blatantly noticeable, right? And I remember every time at camp meeting or every time I went to Bible seminar, he said, now you Raymond graduates, y'all stand up. We all stand up. He said, sit down. And you're looking around, you're Raymond graduates. He said, now you guys that are, you know, didn't go to Raymond, but you're the family of God, you Raymond anyway, stand up. Three quarters of the people that stood up were multiple, three times the people that were Rama graduates. Meaning what? They didn't go to Rama, but they were Rama. They were part of what God had put in the earth, and they took it, and they ran with it, and they embellished it, and they ran to the place where this is what it's all about. Thank God! Because anybody that adheres to this message and preaches it without, we had this happen in Beaumont, Texas, many, 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 many years ago. There's a friend of ours named Howard Cameron, pastor. He said it, I can't take it. He doesn't even know where he got it from. He says, somebody said this one time. He says, they said to me, the word of God is the purest stream in Christendom when taught correctly. Man, that thing pierced me, Pastor Anthony. The word of faith, I said the word of God, the word of faith is the purest stream in Christendom when taught correctly. Because it can be abused. It can, be, can lead people. And we get these adages, no, you name it, claim it. Well, guilty. <laughs> I name what he says I can name, and I claim what he says I can claim. Can yes, you say amen yes, here? Yes. But the bottom line is, you got to be careful because people get on board just for the trinkets. Yes. Can you say amen? Yes. But people like, like this, who I met, uh, you know, that many years ago, and, and, and watched him at camp meeting and, and interface with him, and, and not him being a Rhema graduate, yes, he is. The Word of God, the Raymond Word of God is living big in Pastor Anthony. Amen? And us who went, glory to God, many of us have fallen off. Don't still have it because it went for the wrong reason. Are you getting what I'm talking about here? It's not about your pedigree. It's about your adherence to the biblical principles that are here. And anybody that listens and hears, they are enlisted in the army of God in the Word of faith. Somebody shout glory here. I want to understand. I want to know what faith is about. I don't want to fake it till I make it. So I'm going to walk in the spirit. I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, spirit against the flesh. These are contrary the one to the other so that I cannot do the things that I should and want to do. I will not let that be self-impeding. I've made up my mind. Uh, like they used to say in Church of God, I made my mind, I'm going through. <laughs> I'm going through. I'm, I'm telling you right now. Uh, and, and, of course, uh, when this lady got a hold of it, actually, when the Lord talked to her about the ministry, I wanted nothing to do with it. She would say, nothing to do with it. That's you. That's not me. And, uh, of course, he knew I'd, I'd acquiesce somewhere down the line. But I didn't know that. I said, Lord, do what you ever want to do with her. Just leave me out of it. I'll be the minister of health. I mean, I'll do everything. I, and I did that. And I'm convinced today. Had I not gotten involved in the vineyard in the minutest way, I never would have been accelerated. God calls and chooses from the vineyard. You're doing something in his name. You're doing something to prosper the kingdom of God. All right? It's your training ground, so to speak, and you don't even know it. God's just saying to you, oh, would you do it? Oh, yeah, Lord, anything you want me to do. Remember that anything? Anything? And when he punches your button, you go, everything but that, Lord. No, you can't do that. You've already said whatever you want me to do. And that's what I said then. I mean it today. Wherever, whatever, whenever, we're going to do it. Why? Because I'd rather be within his graces scripturally, and I should know it on the inside of me that I'm within the, in the, within the will of God. Doesn't matter where you are, the safest place on planet Earth is in the center of God's will. Yes. Period. No matter what plague, no matter anything, in the center of His will. And that's where I'm going to just kind of leave you with. You just peruse your heart concerning what you've heard tonight. Do some introspection and find out whether you, you're Christ centered or not. If He beckons to you today, could you and would you abandon whatever you've got on your agenda? And say, yes, Lord, because there are blessings on the other side of yes. Can you say amen? amen. Let's stand. Father, I thank you this, tonight.
got nowhere near where I thought we would, but thank God we got some things out. Amen. The goodness of God is in high manifestation in this ministry. I'll put it this way. In this region, in this area, uh, there have been some black eyes all over the place. You had your knots. You had your knocks, you know, in this area, just like everybody has. But I'll tell you what, it's not a dent in the things of God. You know, if people don't follow God, that's their problem, not God's problem. And if they led people astray and abandoned their own ministry or whatever, that's their problem, not God's problem. And as for me, I'm not locked into the charisma of any human being. Thank God for the ones that are doing it well. I celebrate them. But if somebody doesn't, oops, I'm sorry for them, but it's not going to impede me. I'm not going to lose one night's sleep over it. That's, right. that's how we got to pastor the Lord required us to go and pastor this particular church, and I basically imploded. And I thought, I don't need to go into that mess. You can get somebody else for that, Lord. Well, he had already chosen us. We just didn't know it. And by the time we said yes, and about a nine and a half months later, when we found a pastor and put that pastor in place, we had grown exponentially ourselves. I said this at lunch today. I could never say to Pastor Greg, I know what you're going through, Pastor had I not ever pastored. Until you sit in that seat, you will never know. You can surmise, but experientially you will never know. But now I can say that because even though it was nine and a half months, not nine years, we were ready to go when the Lord released us. Hallelujah. We out of here. <laughs> Glory to God. What I'm saying is this. Wherever he places you, dwell there until he releases you from it. Amen. And faith cometh by. Hearing. And hearing by the word. Yeah. And faith is coming because you are understanding what you're hearing. Yeah. It's not acuity yeah. from the standpoint of your ear. It's basically your heart processing information. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And when you get to that place where you got, you know exactly that you got that down. I've got that. I understand that, Lord. Yeah. More faith is going to come. Hallelujah. Now, more faith is going to come. Look, look, this is 37 years of asking nobody for anything. This is 37 years of traveling all over the world, putting no demands on anybody for anything. And not one time in 37 years has he failed us. Not one time, because he's faithful. My job is to be as faithful as he is. That's all my job and our job is, to maintain our faithfulness toward him. Because even though the Bible says we believe not, yet he ever abideth faithful because he cannot deny himself. Who is himself? The body of Christ. Who's that? That's you. That's you. He cannot deny himself. He will never do that. So I submit to you tonight that walking in the spirit is attainable to every believer, totally predicated upon the amount of word of God that you retain, that you heard, that you process, and now you're implementing Without, without exception. There's no spiritual giant that can do this. You know, anybody can do this. Hallelujah. And it's actually required of every believer. Yeah. That's why he tells you, walk in the spirit. Yeah. He commands you to do that, amen? amen. And if, as, in, in the area of, of uh, overcoming struggles of any kind, I don't care with natural, because we, we'll take these things and we'll run with them, like we said, in the flesh. And you will never see Paul meaning that some believer just did something. He's always referring to the pre-salvation person or that part of man that's not yet saved, which is the soul. Hallelujah. Without exception. Hallelujah. I did my master's on this. I, 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 I did the whole dissertation on just that alone. And I've already been doing it for 37 years. It's not that I have to go do a whole lot of research. You know, it was already there. And, and the professor goes, oh, my, where'd they come from? I've been preaching it. <laughs> Just been preaching it. Oh, what'd you get that? What, what'd you study? Well, I studied the Bible. Amen. And he talked to me. Somebody yeah. shouted him in. Hallelujah. And he taught me. Hallelujah. And he helped me. And he continues to do so. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
plebanaska nungo. Chikele mashkana. Shema hasto. Yeah. Hulu sopa. Yeah. Yeah. These are trying times, said the Lord of hosts. To live by faith is not a luxury in this time, but a necessity. To be led of the Spirit is not an option, says the Lord of hosts, but a necessity. So this is the time of trying, as it were, has already been proven in your heart to the point that you can acclimate to this environment and even be a winner in the eyes of the lost. These are days that require you to step out and step in to the deep things of God. Walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. Do those things in advance on a daily basis and expect my glory to assist you and accompany you and all that's prompted by your faith. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 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 Everything that's prompted by your faith is accomplishable without exception. If it's faith prompted, it's heaven prompted. If it's heaven prompted, it's within your grasp. And now dare you look at yourself as an unqualified yeah, yeah, yeah. to receive from God, from heaven itself. Yeah. Yeah. The good things of God belong to you. You reach out and you grasp them. Oh, what's that song that uh, Pastor Caminet used to sing? Reach out. Uh, that she, the Holy Ghost gave her. Say I know I have it now. The glory is here. What was it? The glory. Oh, the glory is here. Yes, the glory is here. I can feel His very presence in the very atmosphere, and whatever you may need. Reach out and receive and say it's mine. I have it now. Oh, the glory is here. Yes, it is. Yes, the glory is here. I can see his mighty presence. In the very atmosphere, so whatever you may need, reach, reach out, out and, and receive, and say it's mine. mine. I have it now. That's what the Holy Ghost is saying to us tonight. So. Respective pastors, by permission and by anointing, you've just begun. Those things that have lingered in your heart for manifestation are now bursting on the scene, Pastor Greg. They're taking their place. They're now stepping into reality. Not even just theory or dream, but reality in the name of Jesus. An ascension of things that were outside of your grasp, so to speak. Not only within reach, but now available by your faith. Yes. Shemora. Pastor Anthony, you've done everything with the spirit of excellence. You've manifested the goodness of God through brick and timber. you facilitated ministry in the minutest way. Little small place with all the people in it. Now God is expanding you. It's only indic indicative of what shall come in the days to come, my brother. Expansion and expansion immeasurably in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we've been outfitted by the Holy Ghost himself, yeah. Sister uh, um, Ramona. We've been outfitted by the Holy Ghost himself. When you said yes and you had a children's heart toward children, when you acquiesced and said, and people going, oh, how could you do that? I'll tell you one thing, I couldn't do that. I mean, those are little brats, and you begged for it. <laughs> you begged heaven for it. There's a reciprocal coming your way, my sister. Yeah. 
a reciprocal that you couldn't even imagine in yesteryear. That you partake of, and it was, it's, your, it's already a blessing to those that you come in contact with. But it's far beyond babysitting, so to speak, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Sister Gwendolyn, I knew this man before you did. I've sat with him. I've talked with him. I've heard his heart for 30 plus years. And all he ever wanted, the fulfillment of what he wanted, is manifested right now before our eyes. A help me that would join him at the hip in ministry. That would not back down, shirk around in any way, form, or fashion, but you'd elevate together. I am so happy for my brother. I'm happy for you. But I'm happy when he talked to me that odd many years ago when he talked to me about you. And I knew right then this is the kickoff book. This is the jump street. This is where it's going from now on. That's what God has done between you two. Amen. And you that are in various churches, I'm telling you right now, pray over your region. Covet the fact that you now live here. This is where I'm from. You're from here now. If you never, if you're transplanted, you're from here. Heaven sees you as planted in this region. I'm just kind of, I just, I, I, when I hang like I said, I, I, I get in this area, man. I, things just start coming back. I love this region. I love the Gulf states. You know, we all over the world, but I love the Gulf states. Home is Tulsa. You know, ain't no redfish in Tulsa. Amen. <laughs> ain't no snappers in Tulsa. But glory to God, I love it anyway. Because I'm in the center of his will in Tulsa. All I'm saying to them tonight, embrace where you are. And God will enable you in ways heretofore you have not even witnessed before. The corridors of sin that have been out of your reach, so to speak, because they were distant to you, 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 you your presence was so obtrusive to that place, but to those people. You get called into those places now at the behest of the Holy Spirit working through people who were antagonistic toward you in times gone by, who will ask you to minister to them, who will thank you for ministering to them. And the people you go, I never would have thought it. Well, thank God it wasn't dependent upon you. Amen? Because you never would have moved again as much as God had moved you, and that's exactly what's going to happen. So expect great things from God in the days to come. Expect greater things from God in days to come. Let's say this together. I am now, I'm now actively, actively engaged in, engaged in the biblical principle of, biblical principle of walking in the Spirit. Walking in the spirit. Thank, you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am led I'm by the Spirit of God through the Word of God by the Holy Spirit in my human spirit. Thank you. Oh, 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 he wouldn't let me. He wouldn't let me. Ah. John chapter 5, verse number 13. John chapter 5, verse number 13. Lest you think, we just kind of hinted at that earlier, concerning the high case S and the low case S. Yeah. We hinted at that. Yeah. I wasn't going to teach on it fully. Still not. We can't leave without this. John chapter 5, verse number, uh, oh, 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 oh. Where is it? Where? 13, and he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Everybody say conveyed. 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 That word in Matthew 4, <coughs> 1, and Matthew, in Luke 4 and 1, when people say, see, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. I was on the road to Alice, Texas in 1995. My wife was home taking care of our, of our, of our 1996, taking care of our premature, our premature uh, grandson. I'm by myself. I come through Dallas, which is about three and a half hours before I get there, four and a half hours, and said, there's a wreck. I listened to the, there's a wreck on, you know, on I-35. I said, by the time I get there, it'll be gone. So I'm coming down out of, uh, out of uh, San Marcos, Texas, right outside of Dallas, right outside of uh, San Antonio, San Marcos. And all the traffic stops for about four or five miles. Nobody's going anywhere. It's summer. It's 103 degrees. 
I'm just sitting there. And my mind was blank. And the Spirit of God often does that. He invades that moment. Nothing is on my mind. Nothing. Now get ready because we're about to turn over your religious wagon right now. Amen. And I heard this on the inside. The Lord Jesus was never led by the Holy Spirit. I thought, <laughs> it must be this heat. It's got to be the heat. I, I didn't hear that. Again, the Lord Jesus was never led by the Holy Spirit. And I heard Brother Hagin's voice. My Lord, I'm a stickler for the Word. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm a stickler for the Word, Lord. I know what Matthew 4 and 1 says. I know what Luke and 1, 4 and 1 says. Jesus being led by the Spirit. And that's why I had you go there to see the high case or low case S. The word there is to convey, to convey. And remember the implicit and explicit? Some things are implied in one place and made clear in another place. Well, that implied lead of the Spirit of God right here is over in 5 and 13 of John. And the Bible says Jesus conveyed himself away. The word, the word led is Ago, a g o, ago. That means to convey oneself away. His spirit, he followed his own spirit and led himself away. It wasn't the Holy Spirit; it was the human spirit, who said, "Okay, it's time to go be tempted." And he went out there to be tempted of the Lord. The word that means to take oneself when you're going to be led away, you know, like Peter talking being led away. You know, that's apagoa, a p a g o. It means as though by another, to be led as though by another. If the Spirit of God is another, it would have been apagoa there. But if it's a goal, it means to convey oneself away. That's a demonstrable example of every believer's life. You are led by your own Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God that you now have. I'm not waiting all the time, well, I'll go over to God, because I've got to be led by the Spirit of God. I can't move now. What's your spirit saying? And what is the, the, the outcome of that? Is it, is it progressive for the body of Christ? Absolutely. Well, then he knew he had to be tempted. I'm like, Lord. He had to, as the last man, Adam, take the same temptation the first man, Adam, took. He went out there to be tempted in three ways, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. That's it. Nothing ever came out of that encounter that was more than lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Which means this, you don't go through anything more than that yourself. There's no sinning outside of those three. So you went out there, Adam, you fail, I'm here. All right, Satan, take your best shot. Well, now, pride of life. What is pride of life? It's the, su the suppressed spirit of superiority, pride of life. The suppressed spirit of superiority. superiority. If these stones be made flesh, uh, if thou art hungered, the Bible says he was hungered, you know, you can cast yourself along these stones. You're the son of God, aren't you? That's appeal to the pride of life. Make these stones bread, lust of the flesh. I'll show you all the kingdoms of the world, lust of the eyes. There's nothing outside of that that he could be tempted with. That's why when he was finished, on the last one, Jesus said, get the hints. There wasn't going to be a fourth temptation. It was all over. He was defeated. Adam, Eve, failed, bit, ate, lust of the flesh, had him. But Adam, the last man, Adam, was a quickening spirit, not just a living soul. Can you say amen here? Hebrews 4.15 says this, we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. That means sensations and desires. Yeah. We're always tempted as we are, yet without sin. Oh, Don't you dare think that, that because he was Jesus. He demonstrated for you and me. Yeah. We don't have to live in any type of sin. Why? Because he showed us a human being can do it. Hallelujah. A man redeemed you from destruction, not a God. God can't die on the cross. Hallelujah. I almost ran over you, sister. <laughs> oh, oh, 
But a man can, and a man did, brought you back from destruction. Somebody shout glory here. Glory. We've been trying to end this thing for the last 45 minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us tonight, Lord. Sharing with us the deep things of God. Showing us the simplicity of Scripture concerning our lives in you, Lord. Faith can come and will come by us understanding and understanding by the word of God. Thank you, Father. The hearing of faith is the understanding of faith. Thank you, Father, that these things have been literally muddled over out of our own ignorance or just lack of study. But you have shown and magnified to us the simplicity of Scripture and interpretation of Scripture. Let us not be slothful in this business any longer, but apply ourselves to literally divide the word of truth correctly, Lord, and thereby draw the nutrients from it that are embedded in it for our own betterment. We give you glory, we give you praise, we give you honor for it. In Jesus' wonderful name, hallelujah and amen. Amen. In the knees in, in the house God. tonight, we certainly will lay hands and pray for you if that's the case. Okay, so I, I've, I've come to the, the, the last uh, maybe a year or so, we've done a whole lot less of that. When God's got us teaching in these areas, we implement that word. I'll tell you one thing, we self-apply the word of God, things get to happening. I mean, bodies start straightening out. Mind start being renewed. Can you say amen here? And so, we, 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 you know, we don't have to have a, 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 a what do you call it, a suitcase souffle, amen? We just got to make something happen. Glory to God. That the, what's happened already happened, the word of God. Now, if you want us to pray with you, we certainly can. But I don't sense any after service. That's what I'm saying in that regard. We're always available to lay hands on the sick. I'm a believer and they shall recover. But I just want you to understand that when we gather like this, this intimacy, this, this band of believers like this, there's much power available. I said much power available. We can leave here and, and turn our world upside down the way we want it to be turned upside down. That whole thing about the bloodline he gave her, man, I claim that. I thought, glory to God. Oh, thank you, Father. My whole entire bloodline. Me, before me, and currently through us, and all of our kids and our grandkids, as many as are far off. Covered by the bloodline. We pray for our bloodline almost constantly. And when he gave her that, he just kind of relieved me. I thought, well, glory to God. That's the result of believing you, Lord. Not believing that we've got to do this, we've got to do that. we just got to get in place to be sure that we're hearing from God and entertain the things that he says to do and not be so reticent to speak it out. That's an associative boldness that comes with ministry. And if you don't have it, you may as well just, you'll bite the dust somewhere down the line because you're going to be conscious and, 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 and privy to what people might think. I lost that a long time ago. 1992. So what you looking at here right now? You didn't see that before 1992. I mean, 1992, I was at Winter Bible Seminar, and Keith Moore came up with a song. This is that spoken by the prophet Joe. And I was going, this is the... Get that. And the power of God hit this brother. I lost it all. I left my dignity on the floor of Rama Bible Church that night. Amen. And I ain't been the same since. <laughs> <Hell of it. laughs> ain't looking to turn it around. In other words, you don't care what people think. Because as long as I'm in his will and I know it, that's all I need. Pastor, if you will. Glory God. Interrupt this preacher. Praise God. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Let's just pray in the spirit. Yes, with me. And, and oh, it's just four minutes to nine. There are coming days where we will have to learn to tarry in the long in the spirit. There are certain things that take time. Teaching is like flowing water. The water gets higher and deeper as the teacher teaches. And the Mohushile Sombra Amatapa Potepa Sis in the Eranama. The teaching anointing 
is going to be revealed in these days like we've never seen it before. Jesus stood in all five offices of ministry. He was the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist. He was the good shepherd, the pastor, but he was the master teacher, the rabboni. I was walking in the park, praying about the healing ministry, praying about the, talking to the Lord more about the healing anointing and, and the things that he's called me to do. And, and I said, Lord, you appear to Brother Hagen the first Saturday night of, of September 1950. And you laid the tip of your fingers in the palms of his hands and the, his hands started burning like he was holding a coat of fire. And I said, Lord, I said, that anointing needs to be prevalent in the earth. That anointing needs to be active in the earth. It needs to be in the earth. The anointing didn't go to heaven with Brother Hagin. There's no anointing up there needed. There's no yokes to be broken and destroyed. The anointings are for the earth. It's heavenly power that meets earthly needs. There are no needs in heaven or it wouldn't be heaven. So that anointing is in the earth. That style or way or method of ministry is in the earth. And I was talking to the Lord about it. I said, Lord, you put your healing power in Brother Hagin's hand. You, you, you haven't appeared to me and, and laid the tips of your finger in my hand. You put his healing power in your hand. And just like I'm talking to you, I heard the Lord say, but I put my healing power in your mouth through teaching, through words. You see, Jesus had the spirit without measure. And that anointing was on him in a very tangible way. Not just a tangible healing anointing that flowed out of him, but there was a stream of anointing flowing out of his mouth. Rivers of living water flowing out of his mouth. There was just as much healing in his words as there was in his touch. For that power was in his words. And the Holy Ghost in the earth now is about to magnify. All the ministry offices will be magnified. They will be recognized and appreciated. But the office of the teacher, as you was teaching over there, the Holy Ghost was dealing with me about the office of the teacher. The teacher's office will begin to come to the forefront in ways that you've never seen it before. We've only associated teaching with the scripture. I mean, teaching with the scripture. But the Bible associates teaching with the miraculous power of God. The Bible talks about Jesus being that teacher and from whence come these mighty works. The mighty works came out of that flow of teaching. As he was teaching in Luke 5, 17, the Bible says, and the power of the Lord was present to Two, it was active too, through the power of his words. We're coming back to that. The office of the teacher will be magnified. The best teachers haven't taught yet. There's a new breed of teachers that's been on the backside of the desert, and they're coming to the forefront to finish the work of God. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost didn't go to heaven with Brother Hagin. He's still in the earth. He's still bringing understanding. He's still bringing light. He's still bringing revelation. And it's only going to come <clears throat> in the gatherings. For in his light, we see light. For the chief shepherd is in the gathering. Sure, he's at home. Sure, he's in your living room, wherever you're watching. But he's in the gathering. The first chapter of the book of Acts, verse 4 says, And they were all together, and he was there with them. Jesus will manifest himself in the gathering. And great light and great understanding shall come like never before. Magnificent. Magnificent. I knew four years ago when you came and spoke at Abiding Love, I think it was about 2018, 
that we would do a meeting together. I don't know what your schedule looked like next year, but I see in my spirit a faith conference where we just teach and preach for multiple days and major on the subject of faith. Amen. I see it coming over in the next year in, in the summer months. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll look, we'll look at your schedule. We'll talk about it. But we've got to get back to the basis. We've got to get back. To, see, people are quoting scripture, but they don't understand what they're saying. God doesn't confess. He says. He believes it the first time. He says it. He doesn't have to say it over and over again until he believes it. He says it. He only repeats himself in the earth for our benefit to keep his word active in the earth throughout every generation. But it was just as good as done when he said it the first time. Genesis 3.15, there's coming one. Bam, that's all it took. 4,000 years later, Jesus was born. This teaching tonight was revelation knowledge. It, it's, not a, it's not a sermon. It's years of learned behavior. It's learned experience. Taking the word of God. He's learned to use the word of God. And I tell you, Brother Marcel used words that I got to go to my dictionary and look them up. <laughs> I had to sometimes nudge my wife and say, what does that mean? What does that word mean? Because I want to know what it means because I might, I might be that. If I don't know what that is, I could miss it. I may be doing that or I may need to do that. So I need understanding. The Bible says, above all thy getting, get an understanding. Amen. Were you blessed tonight? Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Marcel, Sister Evelyn. We praise God for you. Thank God for you. We're going to receive him a love offering tonight. Amen. You need an envelope. Please get one uh, out of the pocket of the seat in front of you. If you're making out checks tonight, make them payable. Now listen, make them payable to ASM, Anthony Strauder Ministry. Amen. Put in the memo of the check for guest speaker. If you're giving cash, please fill out your envelope in its entirety. If you want a receipt on your giving, uh, put your name on it, your address, and put for guest speaker. Just we, we already got it on the envelope. The only thing you have to do is check for guest speaker. Amen. And everything that you're giving will go straight to Brother, Brother Marshall, the uh, Sword and Psalm ministry, and we'll write them one check from this ministry. Amen. Praise God. I was tremendously blessed tonight. If you've been watching online and this word bless you, then you do the same thing. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 6, let him that is taught. Have you been taught tonight? I've been taught. Communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Amen. So you know what to do, and you know how to do it. If this has been a blessing to you, if you're giving online, just, just make a little memo for guest speaker, and we'll know that everything that's coming in now is going toward this ministry. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Are you ready to give? Yes. Hallelujah. Remember the product tables outside? There's plenty of stuff on the table. Browse around. Uh, leave with something. <clears throat> Get something. Leave with something. Amen? Praise God. Hold your offerings up. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you tonight for this word, and we pray that we will not be forgetful of these things which we have heard lest at any time we let them slowly drift away. And Father, I thank you for greater light and greater understanding in days to come. We bless the Josephs as they travel on the road. Your traveling grace is always with them. They are a living testimony that you can do it and that God is a provider and a protector. And Father, we bless them and we receive this word tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Go ahead and receive the offering, please. Hallelujah. Go ahead and play that, play that song for me, Gwen. If that's it, Brother Jacob. We're off the air. Hallelujah. Brother Marcel danced, and uh, you heard that song years ago. Uh, uh, you was just quoting what Keith Moore sung. Amen.